If I could change one unchangeable thing in American politics, I would ban all speechwriters. And then politicians would have to tell us what they really think without professional writers doing it for them. Our next guest would have no problem with that. Ian Mackey, a St. Louis Democrat, is a member of the Missouri House of Representatives. He delivered a speech this week that is the most eloquent and most moving speech of this week in American politics and maybe this year. No one could have written this speech for Ian Mackey, and he didn't have to write it for himself. It simply burst from him in a controlled mix of pain and strength and truth and hope. You have never seen two minutes and 13 seconds of speech making like this. Republican Missouri State Representative Chuck Basie has a history, some might say an obsession, with introducing anti-LGBTQ legislation. Last year, when he was defending one of his bills, he told a story about his brother, who is gay. On Wednesday night, in the Missouri State State House, Representative Ian Mackey began his remarkable speech in opposition to the bill by reminding Basie about his brother. Do you remember your remarks on the floor last year when you brought this up? Um, it would, you'd have to give me a specific. I mean, I made a lot of remarks last sure. year. So I recall a story you told about your brother. Okay. And I remember you said that your brother called, or that your mother called you, I believe, to tell you that your brother had some news that he was afraid to tell you. Okay. And your brother wanted to tell you that he was gay, didn't he? Um, he was uh, expressing that to the family, and he thought that, uh, that we would hold that against him and not let my children be around him. Why do you think he thought that? I, I don't know. I, it, uh, it never would have happened, I'll tell you that. My, right. uh, my, my kids at that, that point in their life adored my, uh, my brother. Can I tell you, if I were your brother, I would have been afraid to tell you too. Well, I'm sorry. I would have been afraid to tell you too because of stuff like this. Because this is what you're focused on. This is the legislation you want to put forward. This is what consumes your time. I would have been afraid to tell you too. I was afraid of people like you growing up, and I grew up in Hickory County, Missouri. I grew up in a school district that would vote tomorrow to put this in place. And for 18 years, I walked around with nice people like you who took me to ball games, who told me how smart I was, and who went to the ballot and voted for crap like this. And I couldn't wait to get out. I couldn't wait to move to a part of our state that would reject this stuff in a minute. I couldn't wait. And thank God I made it. Thank God I made it out, and I think every day of the kids who are still there, who haven't made it out, who haven't escaped from this kind of bigotry. Gentlemen, I'm not afraid of you anymore, because you're going to lose. You may win this today, but you're going to lose. And joining us now is Missouri State Representative Ian Mackey. Thank you very much for joining us. I just saw this video a few hours ago, and we went into overdrive to try to get you to be with us tonight. Uh, tell us about the moments leading up to that speech and, and what brought you to that point uh, to decide to deliver those remarks. Uh, I think we have a problem with Ian's connection. Go ahead, Ian. Can you hear me? Sure, okay. sure. So, yes. So, um, yeah, so that, you know, that was, um, this is an issue we knew we were going to end up debating at some point this year. Um, this is an issue that, of course, has been uh, brought up in legislators around, legislatures around the country. And leading up to this, uh, we saw that Representative Basie had filed this amendment on a relatively unrelated bill pertaining to elections in our state. And I had asked the floor leader if he wouldn't mind uh, walking over to Representative Basie and asking him to stand down on this. This was an issue that wasn't related to elections. This was a time where we didn't want to have this fight. 
We were working pretty cohesively by, in a bipartisan way as a body that afternoon. The Floyd lawyer went over and um, talked to Representative Basie, tried to ask him to step down. Looked like he was contemplating that. Um, the speaker wanted this to go ahead, however. Um, and, and, you know, I've had private conversations with Representative Basie before this speech, uh, before this moment on the floor where I made it clear uh, that, you know, if we were going to do this out in the open, if we were going to do this in public, if this was something that uh, we were going to debate on the floor, that it was going to get deeply personal and that it was going to be um, a serious moment. And that, you know, this is something that I thought we should keep off the table. This is, you know, an issue that poisons the well. Um, he, Representative Basie and I work on so many issues together in a bipartisan way that is productive for our state. Um, and this issue just poisons the well. And so, you know, I tried several times to avoid this discussion and avoid this debate. But at the end of the day, that wasn't my call. And so what what happened happened. Uh, you moved from Hickory County, Missouri uh, to St. Louis. Uh, I think uh, you couldn't possibly have been elected uh, for, in Hickory County, according to what we heard about Hickory County today. And you talked about in your speech, uh, you think every day about the kids who are still there uh, in Hickory County, the kids who haven't made it out, uh, who haven't escaped from this kind of bigotry. Uh, what do you want those kids to know about what their future can be? You know, I do think about them every day, every single day I think about them. And, you know, whether they're in Hickory County or Dallas County or Barry County or some other rural parts of our state or of our country, uh, you know, I want them to know that there will come a time. Um, there will come a time where they will find people who accept them, where they will find people who love them. And, you know, I had immediate family members who were supportive and who loved me. Um, and who welcomed me and who took me as I was. Um, but, you know, and, and like I said um, to Representative Basie, I had folks who outwardly were, were kind and supportive, but who, you know, when asked to decide the course of public policy, chose to treat me as a second-class citizen. Uh, just know that there are so many places where that's not the case. And um, please, before you do anything else, wait and reach out for help. Uh, there's so many resources. There's so many people who want to help. Um, there's so many people who want to be there for you and, and just let them um, and just know that there are people um, in public office, uh, people I work with in the state of Missouri and people all across the country who are doing everything they can every day uh, to make sure that your rights are just as equal as Representative Basie's or anyone else's. What were you feeling uh, when you in those those two minutes and 23 seconds that we, we just saw where you were summoning up your entire life experience for this moment? You know, uh, it's something I had thought about saying for a long time. Um, it's something I've told several people privately. You know, it's something I talked to friends of mine about, um, uh, acquaintances and friends who grew up in similar uh, situations and circumstances. Um, you know, I serve with other people um, who've been through this. And, you know, I ask uh, these kids and their families to come to the Capitol over and over and over. I beg them to come and share their stories. I, and I, you know, I tell them that I know it's hard. And until that moment, I didn't realize just how hard it really is, because that was my time to tell my story. And... I realized that I finally took a little bit of my own advice. I realized the impact it had, and I hope that it in inspires so many more people, um, kids and parents out there to do the same.